We're one step closer to opening day, but before we do that, we've got some soccer bets to cash. Hey there, everybody. Welcome on into the Wednesday edition here of Winning Bets. I'm, of course, Jason. Thanks for kicking off your Wednesday morning with me here. I greatly appreciate you guys starting off another morning with me here. Let's go ahead and recap Tuesday's action, and then let's get into some more soccer action that we've got on this Wednesday for us here. As you guys can see, yesterday we were down a little bit of money. We went 3-5 and five on yesterday's action. Let's just talk about some of those wins and talk about those losses. Let's go right to that Manchester City versus Atletico game first. I watched every single second of that game. It was an absolute Manchester City domination. I remember actually laughing a couple times, literally like laughing out loud, how easy Manchester City was able to turn Atletico over when Atletico was able to get the ball. It was just, it's just what City does, man. I mean, they control the ball, but then when you get it, Boy, do they just get you in a sloppy passes or they just tackle you and, you know, just get the ball off your foot. Just really quite remarkable. So let's run through these bets here. And before I do that, Manchester City would have won the ball possession spread of minus 35. That's how bad of a City domination it was. So because of that, we put in bets accordingly and we cashed three of those four. We cashed Manchester City over 6.5 corners. Got that cash to happen early in the second half. We also cashed Manchester City on the clean sheet was never in doubt. It was never in doubt. There was one moment where City had a corner and the ball got cleared and I think it fell to Yao Felix and he was off to the races and it was actually good to Juan was trying to chase him down and I was just screaming just foul him just foul him like I don't care. There was another defender, so I don't think it would have been a red card, but Goodwin was certainly the one right next to him. He didn't end up fouling him. He ended up just taking the ball off of him. I mean, these City guys are just absolutely remarkable. But other than that one breakaway, that one moment, it was nothing. It was nothing by Atletico Madrid. So, yeah, easy clean sheet right there. And because City had all the possession, what do you do when you're, you know, in possession? You concede a lot of fouls. And that's what they did, right? The Atletico had the most fouls. They, I think it finished 12 to 8, if I recall correctly, on the number of fouls. So, easy winner right there. That was another one that was never in doubt. It was always like a three or four foul margin. We would never had to sweat that one. Our only loss in that game was Manchester City minus 3.5 shots on target. Mentioned how Atletico would be happy if they got one or two. They got zero shots on target. City only got two. They took 15 shots, but it could only get two of them on target. So just a bad shooting night for Manchester City, and that was the reason why we didn't take under 2.5, right? Because I liked under 2.5, but if City was clinical yesterday, they would have ran that score up. They had all the ball. They had all the shots. So just unfortunate that they couldn't get at least four or five of those on target and went ahead and cashed that bet for us right there. So three and four in that game. I'll go ahead and take that all day long. I love th love winning three out of four. bet. love winning four out of four, but three out of four is certainly good. And that Liverpool versus Benfica game, boy, we were done dirty. D done absolutely dirty. On that clean sheet, we deserve that clean sheet. If you don't know how Benfica scored, it happened early in the second half. There was a ball that was whipped end of the box two Liverpool defenders the ball kind of falls in between them and it's coming towards Kanate the center back there for Liverpool and it just goes between his legs I mean he just misjudged it bounce I assume he just misjudged the bounce and it just goes right between his legs falls right to a Benfica striker and these guys are professionals they're not, miss they're not missing from the six yard box uh, other than that Benfica had two shots on target they did absolutely nothing to threaten Liverpool uh, dirty that we lost that Liverpool clean sheet. I mean, that that hurts. Just how they scored due to a mistake there by Canate. Tough, tough right there. And then over 6.5 corners, we lost that one on the hook. That one was a little bit of a tough beat just because Liverpool had 12 shots in the first half. Then they only had five in the second half. And three of those five came like in the last 10 minutes when they got their goal and they were really pressing. Liverpool definitely backed off. They were up 2 nothing at halftime. And while they controlled the same amount of possession in the first half as they did in the second half, they had about 65% in both halves. They just weren't attacking in that second half and going forward. It's, it's, it's unfortunate because I think if they're attacking and going forward, they probably hold that clean sheet because they're just, you know, in Benfica's half instead of in their own half. And they would have hit that over. They would have gotten one more corner. So tough, t tough right there on that Liverpool game. We definitely deserve that clean sheet. Corners, ah, that was a tough beat right there for us. And then we in the NBA, NBA teasers, swung and miss on, on both of them. I mean, Nets and the Rockets just didn't quite score enough points. Nuggets only got 14 points in the second quarter. I mean, like, are you really kidding me? So yeah, both of those teasers went ahead and lost and 
Before we move on to McDavid here, I will I will just say I'm done with the NBA. Absolutely done. Obviously, we all know baseball starts tomorrow, but I'm done with it. You're getting into the goofy part of the season, the tank season. I mean, look at the lineup that the Thunder and Blazers threw out there yesterday. Like, are you kidding me? Look at what the Magic did last week in a tight ball game, and they benched their starters in the fourth quarter in a tight ball game. I mean, NBA, ah, done with it absolutely done with it so you will not see me give out an nba bet until next fall and i don't care that's not going to change come playoff time i am done with the nba absolutely done with it our boy connor mcdavid came through for us there yeah how about that we've stumbled onto a nice little nice little cash cow there for us right there three and oh now and went over 3.5 shots on goal needed overtime but hey you know that happens sometimes sometimes you get a little bit of help and we certainly got a little bit of help right there with connor mcdavid so yeah down on the day down about the unit and a half and down almost three units on the day and i sit here today and not not frustrated i would just say more annoyed right because on monday if we get that under 2.5 to cash if arsenal doesn't have the clumsy and lazy defending and concede that penalty we cash under 2.5 and monday's a profitable day well yesterday if kanate doesn't have that blunder and let a ball go through his legs we cash the liverpool clean sheet and that's enough to make us profitable so two just really just brutal beats and, and two unfortunate things cost us profit on both the days and you know we had an opportunity but we talk about it right i mean you make these bets right these sports books they've got these numbers always bang on generally speaking you get some easy wins and you certainly get some easy losses but large in part these 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 numbers and you're always a, a, around the hook so to speak generally speaking around the hook the margins of winning and losing can be so small and so thin sometimes and that kanate and that under 2.5 at arsenal crystal palace are just good examples of bets that ah, could have just gone either either way and unfortunately they didn't quite go our way but you know what it's wednesday it's time to turn a profit turn this week around and put some money in your pocket hey we've got some money to go ahead and give away on today's show that's right connor mcdavid he was the bet there on the bet win giveaway that we've been doing here so somebody's gonna win 43 dollars. so let's go ahead and throw up 32 names these are the people who are competing for 43 dollars. so you guys know how we do it around here random number generator We've got to change the max number to 32. Let me share my screen so I can actually see the number here. All right, let's hit the button. Here we go. Who's going to be the lucky winner? Six. Let's go see who number six is. Six is P.S. P.S. So whoever P.S. is, you know who you are out there. P.S. Congratulations. You won $43 thanks to Connor McDavid going over 3.5 shots on goal. So P.S. Hit me up on Twitter. Drop me your PayPal information and I will go ahead and send you that $43. And for everybody else, hey, this contest just keeps on going along because we keep winning. So we'll go ahead and reveal here a little bit later on what the bet win giveaway is today. And we'll see if we can't give away some more money on tomorrow's show. Want to remind you guys, just be a little cautious here. I know MLB starting and everybody's racing like hell to go ahead and get in MLB bets. Remind you guys, the promos are going to come hot and heavy. So maybe just give yourself a little bit of pause. I mean, remember what DraftKings did last season for the first two weeks of the MLB season? We got a 50% profit boost every single day. And then after two weeks, it, it changed to every day to just one a week. But we know DraftKings is going to give you a promo boost. You know you're going to get some risk-free opportunities, probably on FanDuel, BetMGM, Caesars. So just let's see what comes out tomorrow, right? Let's see what kind of comes out tomorrow. Uh, just, you know, the lines are out there. I know it's tempting to go ahead and grab some of those early money lines, but I'll, I'll pay. I'll let the line move in a couple more cents to then get a boost and then move it way better back my furrow. So just want to remind you guys, promos are coming for Major League Baseball, baby. That's right. Not only are the promos coming for Major League Baseball, but so is a new show debuting here on my channel tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Pay off pitch. That's right. Pay off pitch each and every single day, Monday through Friday, 11. 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The Hockey Squirrel and I will go through today, that day's MLB slate and we'll give you 10 or so bets, nerf fees and right fees and totals and F5s and pitching props and batting props and all the good stuff that you guys want to go ahead and look for. The only thing that worth mentioning that I haven't mentioned on the previous episodes is I'm not getting out any baseball bets on this show, on this daily show. And now, that being said, unless I get some crazy line movement and I see something move it and I you know, want to go ahead and give it on this show, I'll do that, but large in part, I will not be giving out any baseball bets on this show. I mean, this show normally drops at 10 a.m. 
Central Time. The show is going to go live at 10.30 a.m. Central Time. So it's a 30-minute difference. I don't see lines moving all that much in 30 minutes. So, yeah, so large in part, no baseball bets will be given on this show. you got to be watching the payoff pitch. It's going to be exciting. I cannot wait for the show to kick off tomorrow with you guys. So come on back tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time for the payoff pitch. All right, and now to the bet portion of the show. I've got three soccer bets today. I've actually already given out all three of these soccer bets, but you know them, but we haven't talked about them. So let's go ahead and talk about them. And actually, all three of these bets, we are on the better side. The line movement has moved in our favor. And so if you waited, you're not going to get the same value that I've got when I initially gave the bet. But that's all right. I think there's still obviously some good bets. So let's go ahead and run through these. We're going to go ahead and start off with the Premier League. We've got Everton going on against Burnley. I get this at under 2.5 goals at minus 148. I now see that that's at minus 160, so not a whole hell of a lot worse, but we're, we've obviously got it at minus 148 the other day. This is a classic relegation fight, and this is a classic Burnley game, right? I mean, you guys want to talk about a good game of football? This one's obviously not going to be like one of those high-scoring, crazy games, but this one should just be a good game of football. It's a relegation fight. This is it. I think Burnley has got to win this game. I think they must absolutely win this game. I think for Everton, it's just a not-lose game. I think if they're able to not lose this game, they'll pretty much be able to stay up and send Burnley down. But boy, if Burnley can get those three points and get that much closer to Everton, boy, we're going to have a really dramatic last few weeks here for the relegation fight. So this one will be tough. It'll be absolutely cagey. The thing about this is this is one of those games where Burnley gets up 1-0. It's going to be parked the bus, <laughs> and Everton's already been struggling to score all season long. You know, I, I think they're absolutely going to struggle to score up against a, you know, Nick Pope, a Ben Mee, a Tarkowski defense. I think they're absolutely going to struggle. Everton, again, hasn't been scoring. Everton's been conceding, so that's why I think Burnley can get a goal. I'm hoping Burnley so – part of me wants Burnley – to get a goal and get the three points because if you remove the top teams in the Premier League, if you were to say what's the next best team that you really think you understand and you have a handle on and the team that has put money in your pocket, I think it's by far Burnley. Burnley is the team that I just push the right buttons on and they do a really good job of putting money in our pocket. This one will be low scoring. Whoever can get one goal, I think it's the race to that one goal and then park the bus because these three points are just so huge in this relegation fight. So give me under 2.5 and Everton burst Burnley. May not be flashy in terms of goal being scored, but I think it'll be a good entertaining football game. I look forward to watch that one. So under 2.5, Everton versus Burnley. If we go ahead and now move it over to the Champions League, there's of course two games. I've got one bet in each of these. Gave this one to you obviously yesterday as well. Villarreal versus Byron. Both teams will score in over 2.5 at minus 105 over at Bet MGM. This line is now minus 120. So another bet that we're on the right side of. We got at minus 105. Look, Byron, everybody wants to think Byron's going to win the game. First of all, I don't bet against Unai Emery in, in European football. You guys remember we cashed Villarreal versus Juventus? There's a reason. His name was Unai Emery, and I remember saying Unai Emery on that show today. So will Byron win the game? Probably, but I ain't betting against Unai Emery. <laughs> you damn straight. And I think Villarreal will get a goal. This is a Byron team that has conceded a goal in nine of their last 11 games, including some absolute like bottom feeders and bonus like like Gerthefer scored on them, Hoffenheim scored on them. Hoffenheim's like mid table, but Gerthefer is the absolute bottom bottom feeder there. We've seen them concede goals in Champions League, right? Salzburg was able to get a goal in both legs. So this is a Byron team that get, I mean obviously knows Byron's offensive firepower, but they concede goals. This isn't like a clean sheet machine. This is not a Liverpool. This is not a Manchester City that keeps clean sheet. They concede goals. And Villarreal, they're not going to say like, oh, let's just try and keep Byron scoreless and, you know, go to go to Munich 0-0 or maybe down 1-0 and see if we can get a result in Munich. No, you're going to do it at home. You're going to... You're, you're, gonna, you're not going to sit back at home and then hope you can go to Munich and get goals where you don't have really any of your fans, just a few thousand supporters. No, wait, do it in front of 60,000 supporters and go get some goals and put some pressure on Byron and make this thing a real tie because I think they can actually do that. I, I think obviously they'll lose over the course of two legs, but they can hang with Byron for a little bit. I think Villarreal absolutely gets a goal. They cannot afford to sit back. You can't afford to sit back. You're not going to go to Munich and get a result. You've got to get a result right here. And I don't think this is a game where they get up 1-0 and pack it in because you want to give Byron the ball. 
they got a lot of playmakers on that offensive side. They're going to put goals in the back of the net if you just concede possession. So I think this will just be through 90 minutes. Just a nice, flowing, entertaining game. Both teams will score. It'll go up over 2.5. And this is going to be a cracker of a game. That's going to be an absolute cracker of a game. It's just with everything that you know about how, you know, Villarreal just can't afford to, like, sit back, lets me love both teams to score on over 2.5. Again, Byron's been conceding. So easy bet. Hope we get the right result. It's Villarreal versus Byron. Both teams to score on over 2.5 five goals at minus 105. Then the other Champions League game is Chelsea versus Real Madrid. I gave out under 2.5 goals at minus 122. That's now minus 140. So another bet we're on the right side of here. So it's Chelsea, Real Madrid under 2.5 goals at minus 122. Let me tell you about this leg. And I've, I've been excited to talk about this one here for a couple days now. First of all, you need two good goalkeepers and an under 2.5. We got Courtois and we got Mendy. Two of the best out there, so absolutely love that. But what I really like about this is what Real did against PSG in the last leg. They went on the road in the first leg. Same thing they're doing here. They're going to, to London. They're going to Stamford Bridge. And what did they do against PSG? They just sat back, conceded possession, and said, PSG, we got a good defense. We think we can hold you goalless. Maybe you get a goal, and damn it, it almost worked. They almost held him goalless, but Mbappe popped up there in injury time and snatched up a goal, but even down 1-0, I think Ancelotti was like, cool, you give PSG that much possession and you only concede one goal? Heck yeah. Ancelotti knew that the return leg of the Bernabeu with that crowd and that emotion, and once the momentum got on their side, they were going to return that leg around and they were going to advance past PSG. So... I think that's, you're going to get kind of that same blueprint. And what I even love about that blueprint is remember after that first leg, the media was all over Ancelotti. They, he got killed in the press, absolutely killed in the press. And if you read the rumors, he even got killed by his own hierarchy, the board. Everybody was mad that, that they brought that style of game to Paris and had that performance in the first leg. Well, you know who got the last laugh? Ancelotti. Ancelotti got the last laugh. He's like, who's in the next round of the Champions League? It ain't PSG, it's Real Madrid. So you know what Ancelotti gets to do? He gets to say, you know what, board? You know what, hierarchy? You run the business. You make us profitable. I'll run the pitch. I'll run the pitch. That's what you hired me to do. And I'll decide what kind of tactics we put out on the pitch. Because we nailed them against PSG. We held them almost goalless. Only gave up one goal in Paris. Came back to the burnabout with our crowd, with our emotions, with our momentum, with our team. And we stuck it to them and we got a victory and we progressed in the Champions League. So I'll decide what tactics we take and you run the front office. He's going to run the same thing here at Stanford Bridge, folks. He's going to run the exact same tactics. He's going to say, all right, we'll go to Stanford Bridge and try and keep this 0-0 as long as we can. Because when we take this sucker back to the Bernabeu with our fans, with our emotion, once that momentum hits our side, Chelsea's done. Chelsea's done. And it's going to be an easy sell to the players, right? It's not like he's going to have to sell these tactics. It's going to be like, hey, same thing against PSG, boys. Let's go out there and run that same thing against PSG. So I could not be in love with under 2.5 goals. Chelsea's not even really scoring. I mean, they've generally speaking been struggling all season long to score goals. It's not a team that's been racking up goals at a pretty good clip like they were last season. And then we obviously know Chelsea's defense is really good. Outstanding goalkeeper. Probably the best in the Premier League. Just an outstanding goalkeeper. Fantastic back four. Best defensive midfielder in all of football in Conte. So... Yeah, under 2.5. I mean, talk about the amount of love I have for that bet. I absolutely love it. So that's how we'll do a roll right there. Under 2.5 goals in Chelsea versus Real Madrid. That one I should have put multiple units on it. I should have put multiple units on it. Minus 122. Now it's going to cash. All right, so those are the three bets. We'll go ahead and do Everton versus Burnley under 2.5 goals at minus 148. We'll do Villarreal, both teams to score. Both teams to score in over 2.5 at minus 105. And we'll do Chelsea versus Real Madrid under 2.5 goals at minus 122. I'm undecided on which one of these is going to be the bet, give, uh, bet, win, giveaway. It's going to be in the Champions League. I think I'm going to lean towards that Villarreal Byron just because it's at the better price. And that way we can give away more money. So actually, I'm going to make that determination. I'll go buy it here right after this. It's minus 120 uh, right now. But yeah, it's better better price than Chelsea, and I want to I want to give away more money on tomorrow's show. So Villarreal Byron will be the bet win giveaway 
for today. All right, so there we have it right there. We get an afternoon of soccer, then we get to take the night off, no NBA, no NHL, and I'll just be cramming baseball. I've been cramming so much over the last three days, last, I mean, I've been cramming for the last few weeks, but really like ramping up here in the last three days, getting ready for this show tomorrow. That's all I'm gonna be doing tonight. So look forward to that. After cashing these three soccer bets, we'll turn our attention to baseball. And then, uh, yeah, we'll do that. All right, guys, enjoy your Wednesday. Come on back tomorrow, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching till the end. I'm Jason Mattis. Any love you can show by giving me a like, a subscription, or a comment, or even just share this video is very much appreciated. And don't forget to turn on your notifications to increase your chances of locking in the same odds as I talked about today. And check out my other great videos in these corners.